Good morning, Paul and Drigo here. Just wanted to do a uh, a new episode today of the top five new developments going on in new construction in the east end of Toronto. So as you've probably heard me say in previous episodes, uh, or if you know me at all, uh, you'll know that I've been a Danforth Woodbine area resident for 21 years this year. Celebrated my 20th year last year and had a year-long party um, throughout uh, the different events that I had in the neighborhood, street parties, uh, get-togethers, just absolute, just an absolute blast. Still recovering, uh, but also still partying. I still um, love the fact that uh, you know, I'm part of such a great neighborhood that's been on the rise for quite a while. I was interviewed a few years back by City TV, um, and you may have seen that clip as well, and it was talking about how this area was sort of the next new wave, the Danforth East area. Uh, so not only is it the, the or, or not, long, not only was it the, the the, the next place to be. It is the place to be. Um, my forecast for this area over the next decade is going to be just absolutely stellar. Um, the next five to 10 years will be very, very telling as well. Uh, there's a couple developments going on right now, two of which are on my, my, my top five list to watch. Now, again, this is something very important for you guys to understand when you're listening, uh, is I am not endorsing any of these projects, nor do I work for the developers of any of these projects. Um, I have not ever once worked for a developer uh, in my um, 20, almost 20 years of real estate, and, and I'm not going to uh, <laughs> in the next 20, because I like the fact that I'm able to maintain sort of a, a, an arm's length version, an arm's length relationship from every builder that I work with uh, and strictly represent you, the buyer, the investor, whoever it is, uh, and make sure that you know everything about every project. Now, I'm not going to say um, that you're going to get the same, you're not going to get the same experience at all at the sales center. And, and I've said that for many years. You actually might uh, be in a position where if you do skip the meeting with me and, and go, you know, and going through me as your buyer agent, you might, you might actually not get all the details that you really should about that development, that developer, that area, simply because it's something that I am uh, on the ground level of way before any shovels are in the ground. And I'm still around way after the place is built. I don't just, you know, move into a neighborhood, build a building and leave. That's part of the reason why I want to make sure that we are in, you know, we're, we're, we're connected. We're, you know, even if it's just as simple as, which is really what it is, it's as simple as a coffee. It's as simple as a, you know, and, and I'm not going to say that, you know, a $5 coffee is always a good idea. <laughs> um, I prefer to, I prefer to buy the coffee at, um, uh, at one of my local offices. I've got a few throughout the, throughout the neighborhood, throughout the city, I mean, uh, so I can meet with you at any of my offices or again, either way, coffee's on me. And again, 20 minutes, 30 minutes in. And you'll understand a little bit more about what I'm talking about now and why it is so important that you get the right information from the right person uh, and not exclusively from the developer. I will make sure you get all the right information, including the stuff that has to do with VIP sales, uh, getting an early registration, all that kind of stuff that, again, if you're not an active investor and you don't know anything about digital lineups, um, you really have to make sure that we connect because there's a whole different world out there that's happening now uh, that you have to be part of. You have to be sort of with me in my VIP um, invitation list versus waiting for three or four months to go uh, by the sales center doors open and you might not even have uh, uh, remotely the same choices. And that's something that, again, uh, you know, you need to be aware of. And it's something that, again, because of the fact that I've got enough expertise with these projects, what to look for, what to look out for, um, all the stuff, you really need to make sure that you're with me on that. So uh, I'm just going to run through a few of these projects. And again, this is just a few of the ones that are in the top five. I'm not going to, sorry, like in, like obviously in my you know, my top projects list, obviously I've just picked sort of a few just to sort of highlight to make sure that you guys understand, uh, you know, what it is that you need to know. One of them, uh, that's coming up. Um, and I was just at a meeting for is the, um, this new condo being built, uh, and, and I'm quite sure it's going to be uh, built and it's going to be in place, but not for a few years, uh, right at the corner of Danforth and Woodbine. It's it's uh, basically what I would call sort of the young and bluer of Danforth East. Literally, that's sort of our corner. Um, 
there's a lot of great stuff in our neighborhood by all means. And some of it, obviously we don't want to change other things need to be improved on, need to be changed. And uh, because of that, it's going to be a little bit of a transition matter, uh, a transition issue. So it's going to be a good five or 10 years. And hopefully uh, when it's all done, it's going to have, you know, a lot more people uh, living in that area concentrated around transit so that they can literally just go to go down to the bottom of their building, jump on the subway and go wherever they want. Uh, hopefully, uh, if, if I had my way, there would be little or no car parking um, in the building. That's a, that's sort of a strong opinion that, uh, that I have, but I know other developments have done this in certain areas so that there literally would be no choice uh, for people living there besides, you know, being transit users and, and not adding anything to the street. Street traffic. Obviously, again, there's a reason why I'm not a developer. Uh, I've got very strong opinions, and I really don't worry too much about um, how they're perceived as far as you know by uh, you know on a marketing level. Because again, I can speak completely openly here, and and as you find out when you meet me, um, <laughs> there's a reason why uh, my main podcast is called Toronto Real Estate Unfiltered. I I, I choose to say again in my uh, you know opinion based uh, uh, I'm sorry advice based Based manner, not opinion based. Uh, I try to make sure that I give the, the best possible advice uh, to you guys when you're making decisions about properties. So again, just a couple projects that you need to be aware of. One of them is the Clonmore urban towns. Those have been getting a lot of buzz lately. Uh, and of course, so this is an area, this is an area nearby. And this is, this is, this is sort of how I discuss this. Um, it doesn't have to be right in Danforth East for it to be, um, you know, to, to be benefit, uh, to, to get the benefit of that area. This is an area called Birchcliff, um, uh, uh, Birchcliff nearby, which is, um, a, a very, a very up and coming area that's sort of nearby us. It's just North of the beaches, um, North of the bluffs. Um, uh, and then of course it's, uh, uh, it's just east of the Danforth. So it's, it's an area that's worth looking into. There's a, a total of 118 suites being built there. Um, it's, it's proposed to only be about three stories. So it's nothing, it's nothing too, you know, nothing too overwhelming. Uh, the area itself, of course, there's been a lot of, uh, debate and, and, and discussion about the area, of course, being, uh, uh, you know, backing on to, uh, you know, a lot of nature uh, and everything like that. So there's a lot of, you know, ups and downs about, uh, you know, how you feel about that. But um, again, if it's an area that you want to be, you know, calling home, and of course we are, uh, you know, a, a lot of these developments, as, I, as I've heard from city planners, a lot of these developments are going to be, um, you know, because of the, the way the green belt has been um, protected, a lot of the urban developments that are going to be happening here are going to probably be pretty substantial to, to make up for the fact that they don't want to build outside of the certain, uh, certain parameters. Again, I'm not a city planner. I can't tell you whether that's a good or a bad idea. Uh, all I'm going to do is make sure that if you're going to be, you know, investing in any of these projects, you want to make sure that you're, you know, making smart choices. Um, and again, with this property having approximately 118 suites, um, and right now, you know, just basically like I'm going over all of these uh, sort of the, of the, the renderings and the drawings with people, uh, and as well as, you know, the, um, when the pricing is available. So for this one here, uh, you know, you're going to be talking about, uh, the, the opportunity to get in from the low 400s. So it's going to be something where, you know, you're going to be in a position where, uh, if you're buying here again at the right time, you know, of course, you know, making the, you know, making the right decisions and doing the right research, hopefully with me, um, you know, you'll be in a position where you're going to be ahead of the game, uh, and able to, again, make sure that you, you know, make all the right, uh, you know, decisions, um, when you're, when you're dealing with new developments. So that's, that's, you know, that's definitely one of those, uh, uh, factors that you want to make, you know, take into consideration is of course the size of the building that you want to, um, move into and, 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 and all, all, all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, th so that's going to be one of them. Um, the, the other one that's going to be, um, uh, being the, uh, you know, being in the, 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 the discussion mode as well, um, is again, the, uh, the, by, uh, and this is by the, the, the core architect. So this is not by the core. Uh, this is going to be by, um, by the, you know, by the Danforth Woodbine area. Um, that's going to be one of the, you know, one of the things that, uh, that, 
that's going to be uh, something for you guys to look into uh, is the is the Woodbine Danforth development. There's going to be a lot of changes going on to that area. So that's uh, another one that to, that you should be watching with me uh, and making sure that you're in a position where, again, when you're uh, doing your due diligence and doing your shopping, uh, that you look into. And of course, you have to weigh the pros and cons of of all these things. And and uh, I'm not going to tell you this is going to be easy because there's a lot of people who've been, uh, you know investing in condos over the years. And, and some of them have been, you know, very happy with the end result. They've, they, you know, they've, they've chosen good buildings. Uh, I've got clients of mine that are, you know, personally uh, sort of, you know, excited right now about the fact that they're going to be moving into um, uh, condos that are going to be ready along the Danforth. And the, the Canvas condos is, is one of those projects that's uh, moving along quite well. Uh, and again, those are, you know, those are, you know, really, really, uh, again, those are really excited people that I know that are, that are waiting to move in there and get their keys. And, and, and some of them have already mentally moved into that, to, to that building. So it's, uh, it, it's really important that you, you know, make the, the right choices. Unfortunately, um, not too far from there, there was a, a project that uh, had come up that, uh, unfortunately is no longer, uh, going on, uh, which is the, on the Danforth condos. And, uh, you know, again, aside from being extremely disappointed, uh, in the development and, uh, I, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say that I know all the details. I've certainly tried to connect with the developer to get information and I was, uh, ignored and I, uh, didn't really, um, appreciate that. And, and of course, whenever I'm dealing with any, um, uh, project, I, I really, I really value communication. So if you're a builder, if you're a developer, um, you know, uh, of any kind and you're doing a project and you, you know, you know that you're talking to me, um, hopefully you're going to be able to give me the, again, the information and the respect that I deserve, because again, I am going to be speaking to, um, you know, in many cases, not just, you know, a few, but sometimes thousands of uh, of potential buyers. And especially, you know, thanks to this, um, platform that I have, um, it, it's, it's a, it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty powerful, uh, you know, situation to be in. And, and again, I, I, I do not take it lightly. I want to make sure that I'm giving people again, all the best information along the way. Uh, and, and of course, making sure that again, I, I, um, you know, treat everybody fairly. So that's why I'm trying to make sure that I get, you know, all the details from every project. Uh, before I do any reports. Um, uh, and, and just, again, make sure that you guys know as well that, again, these are sort of the the, the projects that you should be looking into. So now another one, and of course, I'm just going to be, again, sort of going through these randomly. The, and, and, and they'll, of course, depend on, you know, whereabouts you want to live. And of course, again, on the Danforth or near the Danforth, you know, you might, you might not be stuck on that. If you're not stuck on being on the Danforth, there's also another project going on right now. That's it. it that isn't VIP sales. Um, and that's the river and fifth condos. Those are being, um, uh, those are, those are available now. And those are, those are starting from the mid four hundreds. Now, when it comes to any of the projects that I might mention here, and again, I am not endorsing any of them. What I'm saying is uh, these are just a few of the projects that we will be comparing. And that's a huge part of the discussion um, matter with me. Uh, if you're going to be serious about um, looking into projects, you cannot just be going into one sales center and, and making a decision based on that alone. You need to actually come with me. Uh, of course, first of all, uh, you'll be doing buyer, you'll be doing new construction buyer boot camp, which is a whole different type of, uh, boot camp that I do, but I really do not let anybody even go in the sales center with me until they're able to understand certain things and certain and, and understand everything about the pros and the cons. Because again, if you're, you know, you're walking into a, uh, um, a sales center and, and you might not be aware that, you know, you might be walking in, in one month and then like uh, two or three years later, you might be walking back in, uh, or you might be getting your deposit back because that building for some reason, uh, isn't going Going to be built. And that's a huge, you know, you're taking a huge risk on that. And now, and, and that's the thing I can honestly say in the 19 years, and I'm knocking on wood, as I say this in the 19 years, I've been handling new construction, uh, not one project that I've been lucky enough to be, um, uh, uh, to, to have investors investing in not one of those projects has, has ever uh, fallen apart. They've, they've, they've all gone through. And I'm talking about like a lot of uh, condo, con a lot of loft conversions that I've dealt with, uh, right from the early Broadview lofts conversions, the Brock lofts I had sold, uh, in both 
of those developments to uh, the last two or the last two or three of, of the of the um, of the units in those buildings. And, and again, the, the 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 clients who bought in there uh, were phenomenally, uh, you know, they did phenomenally well in those projects. And and and, and that's the sort of track record that I have with this stuff. And I want to make sure that again, every project that I, you know, dig into, um, again, I cannot see the future. I don't have any secret, uh, recipe, but what I do, but I, what I can do is I can analyze the past. I can analyze past projects, uh, whatever the company is, if it's their first, then there's a couple of construction companies that I'm aware of that this may be their first condo in the city. Uh, I like to actually even go outside of Ontario and look and see what they've done. For example, if they were building in BC, if they were building in Alberta, uh, what they did out there, what their track record is. This is stuff that you will not get at the sales center. You might get the, you know, you might get the glossy brochure about here's what we built, here's what we built. Uh, but I, I actually have agents again in these other cities um, that know the real details, that know the dirt. And again, the only people I do my referrals with, by the way, across Canada, across the U.S., are the same kind of unfiltered people, which is, again, just the kind of people that you want on your side, like the kind of people that, you know, if you're at a bar and something happens and you need someone defending you um, to, to, to help, you know, to, to help you in a, in, a, in a situation, those are the kind of people uh, I, I, I like having around me. Um, it might come from the fact that I played rugby for a huge portion of my life, a little over 10 years. Um, so I got to know a lot of really good people and I got to know them on the field. Now that's something that, uh, and I'm not talking about knowing everybody I meet on the field, but knowing what they're really like, knowing the ones you can count on, knowing the ones that aren't talking about you behind your back the minute you turn around. Um, there's a lot of those kind of people around, unfortunately, um, some of which have become clients over the years and I've had to fire as a result result of finding out how um, just toxic some of them can be. So right now, I can't say that there's uh, anybody around me or even in my client base that is, you know, like that. It's just a really good, solid core of people. Um, and just bottom line, um, you know, I want you every single one of you listening, I want you guys making smart decisions that will help, you know, will, that will add to your quality of life, that will give you some sort of peace of mind that might, you know, the, the, the projects that you invest in that might do so well that even by the time the keys are available, you might be sitting on, you know, a huge chunk of, of equity that you never would have imagined. And you maybe, you know, you, that you couldn't have made in that time. That's the other thing about this. So, you know, I've got clients getting keys to different projects all over the city, uh, at all times of the year. So in some cases for them, it's their, you know, it's their, it's their dreams, their first time purchase. They want to move in and, and enjoy for others. It's basically something they invested in life's changed. They've moved, uh, and now they're ready to, again, just cash out. And, uh, the ones that have done that, some of them have, uh, literally just, uh, you know, been able to make life changing, um, sales as a result. And of course I'm always, you know, you guys know this about me, whether it's resellers new, uh, I'm always hoping to set the new sold record for that area or that project. I would, uh, uh, again, be always, it's always a privilege for me to be able to connect with you and find out what your maximum sold price is going to be uh, at that time and uh, try to at least uh, meet or exceed that number, depending on, again, of course, the way your property looks, the timing of the market. Um, of course, some of those things that are <laughs> uh, variables that none of us can control. Uh, it, it's very important that we do it right. So again, today was really just sort of a quick overview of just a few of the projects that are on my sort of hot list, I would guess I call it. Um, but there's a lot more. You really need to know... Um, as much as possible about this. And of course, connecting with me, working with me directly as your buyer agent uh, gives you a lot of these advantages. And again, obviously the stuff that I get invited to, I don't like going to, um, I don't like going to any developer, uh, VIP meetings. I don't like going there myself. I actually love bringing clients with me and actually having you guys be there with me sometimes, uh, getting the first glimpse uh, of a project and finding out exactly what it is because bottom line, I mean, if this is your money, which of course it is your money, you're spending, you're investing in these projects. You should be right there at the, at the sort of at the beginning of the line with me. Um, um, 
Uh, again, the Buyer Bootcamp uh, also includes, you know, all the great video training that I've uh, been working on over the years. This is something that I believe is exclusive um, to me. I don't know if anybody else is doing that. I'm they're certainly not saying anything about it. So I've got this incredible video bootcamp training system as well uh, for those of you buying, investing, selling, all that stuff. Um, and again, the, the the perks, of course, you know, they're just the uh, the rewards along the way and the uh, the discounts, the, the thousands of dollars and pre-arranged discounts for everything from moving to painting to cleaning to you name it. Um, this is all stuff I've worked on for you guys. Again, way before I meet you, this is all in place. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Why should you? You're paying a lot of money to, uh, you know, to, to be part of this. I don't think that you should have to, you know, jump in and reinvent the wheel every single time. Uh, um, I'm being compensated when I'm buying by the developer, just so you know, you're not paying me. But again, my compensation, I always treat it as, you know, whatever I'm getting compensated from, um, I want to make sure that the value exceeds that. And, and I believe in each case for me, um, sometimes even just the warnings that I give you are, are worth that alone, even if it's to walk away from a project just because there's red flags uh, or there's something I don't like about the contract. Um um, the contract clauses, stuff like that. Cause every builder and every development is different than if we don't have, and there, there's a checklist that, that I make sure that, you know, I run over with you and again, your lawyer that's going to be reviewing this project. And I'll be meeting with the lawyer, another one next week to uh, discuss, uh, this and a bunch of other stuff. And hopefully, uh, again, you'll hear it uh, on one of these podcasts soon, but yeah, so that's the, uh, the quick rundown of the top five, um, projects. I've just named a few of them, but of course the best thing to do is connect with me. Um, email is great. Paul.indrigo at c21.ca. Um, and go right to my links. If you want to get my top five new construction, um, projects in the area that you wish, it could be on the Danforth, could be downtown, could be Oshawa, could be Richmond Hill you name it. Um, I do, I, again, I, I keep track of these because of the fact that again, my client base is, is all over Ontario. Uh, so anything that's in the Toronto or GTA, um, I'm definitely going to be the one I hope that, uh, is, is going to be helping you get there. So thanks for tuning in again to this episode and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.